Hello students, I hope you all are fine. Students, in our previous videos, we have completed our first chapter of biology, that is improvement in food resources. Now we will start our next chapter, cell, the basic unit, cell. So what is cell? A cell is a structural and functional unit of all living organism. It can exist independently and can perform all the life processes. Just as building is made up of bricks, the body of all living organism is form of cells. Unicellular organisms like amoeba, they are form of single cell, but their single cell is able to perform all the life processes. While multicellular organisms like we, the human beings, the plants and animals that we see around us, they have millions of cells in their body which are performing all the functions. Now, what are the uh, what are uh, the basic characteristics of cell? Cell, as I told you, they are the building blocks of all plants and animals. Means all the plants and animal body, they are made up of cells. Now, a cell is capable of independent existence and it can perform all the basic functions of life. As we are seeing in amoeba, that a single cell is performing all the basic functions of life. Next, every organism starts its life as a single cell. Each cell has its own life span. So when we have started our life, when we are in our mother's womb, then our life has started just from a single cell. And then we already know that many cells, they together join to form a tissue and many tissues together, they form an organ and the organs work together as a system and form an organism. And the old and worn out tissues that are present, uh, cells that are, con uh, that are present in our body, they are continuously replaced by new cells. Now, how these cells are, have been discovered? We know that cells are so tiny that they cannot be seen with naked eye. So, these were first discovered by Robert Hooke in 1665. He was an English scientist. He saw cells in a thin slice of cork with a screwed microscope. He observed that it is just like a honeycomb like structure and named them as cells. His discovery indicated for the first time that living organism consists of number of small structures of unit. Now in 1674, 1674 a Dutch cloth merchant and microscopist Antony van Leo van Hoek, uh, he observed red blood cells, unicellular organism from pond water, bacteria, sperm cells of human. He used a homemade microscope with improved magnification. So, uh, it is Antony van Leo van Hoek who discovered the living cell. And Robert who, he has discovered, first time he has discovered the cell, but they were the dead cells. They were the dead cells of the bark of a tree. The cells that are seen by Robert Hu, they were all dead cells and they had only empty spaces surrounded by a cellulose wall. Today, cell denotes the living contents or the protoplasts. So, Anthony Van, he, Anthony Van Leo Van Hoek, he discovered the living cell and Robert Hu, he discovered the cell for the first time. But he has discovered the dead cell in the bark of a tree. In then later on in 1831, Robert Brown, he described the nucleus in the cell of orchid roots. Then J. E. Purkinje and Von Ball, they named the living substance of the cell as protoplasm. Now let's study about cell theory. A German botanist, M. J. Schilden, and German zoologist, Theodor Schoen, they collectively formulated cell theory for plants and animals. In 1885, a German physiologist, Rodolf Virtue, he gave the phrase omnis cellula e cellula. It means all cell arise from pre-existing cell. So this principle was also added to cell theory. Now let's see what is a cell theory. First, Cell is a basic unit of cell is a basic unit of a structure of all plants and animals. Cell is a basic unit of function as all the metabolic reactions they take place inside the cell. Cell is a unit of heredity as it contains hereditary material inside the nucleus. All living cell they arise from the pre-existing cell. So this is all about.
but there are some exceptions to cell theory like viruses they are not the cells but they are the microorganism they are nucleoprotein particles nucleic acid molecule is enclosed in a protein coat viruses they do not have nuclear cytoplasm or enzymes they cannot multiply outside living system and they do not perform any life activity so this is the exception to cell theory now we will see that there are different shapes and sizes of cell but all of these are ultimately determined by their specific function the cells they are so tiny that they can be seen only through a microscope the smaller cell is mycoplasma or pplo it measures 0.1 to 0.15 micron in diameter the longer cell are the nerve cell measuring nearly 1 meter in length the larger cell are the ostrich eggs which we can see from our naked eye it is about 170 to 117 to 135 mm in diameter among plant the single cell alga acetabular area it measures nearly 10 cm in length some cells they are, in order to perform different functions the cell exhibit different shapes in different parts of the body and also in different organism some cells like amoeba and white blood cells they can change their shape whereas most plant and animals they have cells of fixed shape these cells they can be of spherical oval polygonal cuboidal spindle shaped or cylindrical now let's study about the structural organization of cell a genera generalized animal cell is broadly form of three major parts these are plasma membrane or cell membrane nucleus and cytoplasm with cell organelles you will study about them uh, later on in the chapter a plant cell is a little bit different from an animal cell instead of uh, uh, it has a cell wall and a vacuole in addition to these structure so a plant cell it is having a plasma membrane or cell membrane with this cell membrane it is having a cell wall also and uh, it uh, in plant cell a large vacuole is also present this you are going to study later on uh, later on in the chapter okay let's study about plasma membrane or cell membrane first so plasma membrane is a outermost covering of all cell it separate the cell contents from the external environment actually every cell is bounded by an extremely thin elastic and selectively permeable plasma membrane it is about 7 to 10 nanometer thick and it can be seen only under electron microscope it is form of lipids and proteins and cannot be separated from the cell cytoplasm here you can see the structure of the plasma membrane this in 1972 singer and nicholson they suggested a model called fluid mosaic model to explain the ultra structure of the plasma membrane or any other membrane of the cell according to them plasma membrane it is made up of bilayer two molecule thick layer of phospholipids two type of protein molecule floated about in the fluid phospholipid layer and they describe it as a number of protein icebergs floating in the sea of lipids this model is a most accepted one as it, as it describe both properties and organization of the membrane what are the functions of the plasma membrane it binds the semi fluid content of the cell and it gives a definite shape to the cell it functions as a mechanical barrier it protects cell contents and maintains internal environment of the cell being selectively permeable plasma membrane it permit only certain substances to pass through because of flexibility plasma membrane enables a cell to engulf large molecules and food particles chemicals which are present on the surface of the plasma membrane they help in recognition of foreign substances and they defend against microbes so plasma membrane is called selectively permeable membrane as it is only allowing certain substances to pass in and out of the cell now the main function of plasma membrane 
is to selectively control the entry and exit of, exit of substances inside and outside the cell. So how these substances enter and they come out of the cell? Let's study about them. So substances can enter the cell across a plasma membrane by following processes. Diffusion, osmosis, endocytosis and phagocytosis. First, we are going to study about Diffusion is a spontaneous movement of particles of a substance in a gas or liquid form from a region of its higher concentration to a region of its lower concentration until uniform concentration is achieved at both ends. In diffusion, molecules move along concentration gradient, means they are moving from high concentration to low concentration. That is why there is no energy required in this process. Now, let's uh, see one example of diffusion. The exchange of respiratory gases, that is oxygen and carbon dioxide between the cell and its external environment is an example of diffusion. During cell respiration, oxygen is used and oxygen concentration inside the cell becomes lower than in surroundings and oxygen enters the cell by diffusion. Similarly, carbon dioxide is produced during metabolism of glucose in the cell its concentration rises in the cells. So when its concentration rises in the cell, the CO2 from the cell diffuses into the surrounding medium. Now diffusion of a substance across a biological membrane from the region of its higher concentration to the region of a lower concentration, it is called passive trans. Now osmosis. Osmosis is a movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration, tending to equalize the concentration of the water. Osmosis is also a passive transport means it does not require energy to be applied. Now when two aqueous solutions are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, they are called osmotic solutions. The semi-permeable membrane separating them allows to and fro movement of water or solvent molecules. It is impermeable for solute molecules. When a plant or animal cell is placed in a salt or sugar solution in water, the movement of water molecules into or out of the cell through plasma membrane will depend on the concentration of solute of the surrounding solution. Based on the concentration of solute in water in the outside solution, the solution can be related to the cell as isotonic, hypotonic or hypertonic. Now, endocytosis and phagocytosis. Endocytosis is the ingestion of material by the cells through the plasma membrane. It is a collectively term that describes three simpler processes. Phagocytosis, Potocytosis, phagocytosis, that is cell eating, potocytosis, cell drinking, and receptor mediated endocytosis. These processes are pathways to specifically internalize solid particles, small molecules, and ion and macromolecules, respectively. So, endocytosis is cell obtain some macromolecules, and some cells can engulf solid particles from the external environment. Taking in the macromolecule by the cell is called endocytosis and engulfing solid food particle is called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis, it literally means cell eating. It is a common method of feeding among the protozoa and lower metazoa, that is sponges. It is also the way in which white blood cells engulf cellular debris and in uninvited microbes in the blood. Like WBCs, there are uh, other phagocytes such as macrophages found in connected tissue of liver sinusoids. In the phagocytosis, an area of the plasma membrane coated initially with actin myosin forms a pocket that engulfs the solid material. The membrane enclosed vesicle phagoscome then detaches from the cell surfaces into the cytoplasm where its contents are digested by the lysosomal enzyme. So amoeba. It obtains food by phagocytosis and WBCs, they engulf invading microbe by phagocytosis and their toxins by. Now students, the next part of this chapter, we will study in our next video. Thank you.